o'clock. Tell in. <laughs> <laughs> Two o'clock on Eastern time and time for another Geeks on Tour. What does this button do show? I'm Jim, and together here with my wife, Chris, we are the Geeks on Tour. <laughs> we do invite you to become a member of Geeks on Tour. That's how we make our money, and that's what we do for a living. And just go to our website at geeksontour.com and... Lots more to learn. Lots more to learn. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? And do you have questions about your Android or your iPad or your iPhone or your Nexus or any of these <laughs> devices that you might have laying around your house? I hope you don't have as many as we do. But how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks who teach. First of all, we just love learning. So that's what we do all the time. And we have to have an excuse. So our excuse is that we like to teach you. We think the best way to learn is a little bit at a time on a regular basis. So that's why we came up with this show that's every, every week. Our website, geeksontour.com, has static tutorial videos on it. The show is live each week. Okay. Right now we're in Fort Lauderdale again. Yeah. And we're getting ready to do something really special. We're going to England this week and spend a couple of weeks over there seeing our friends Phil, Phil and Tracy May from used to be Techno RV. They've sold the business Techno RV. Other folks are running it now and, and it's in good hands, but we get to go and visit. It's really pretty cool. And this, this is going to be great. It's only two weeks, so we don't need that much technology, but we used it for an excuse. <laughs> to buy how many more new phones, Jim? Well, we have the new Nexus. That is a Nexus 6 on Project Phi. That's the new Google invitation only Google phone. And we have the iPhone. We got the iPhone. And this is on T Mobile. So the Google Fi is on Sprint and T-Mobile and mostly using Wi-Fi for phone calls, but it's an international plan. Same thing with this T-Mobile iPhone has an international plan. So we, for no extra charge, can do phone calls and text. And we have a certain amount of limited data on these both of these devices so so we still use so how many phones are you juggling now i'm juggling three phones <laughs> so i still have my samsung galaxy note 3 that's kind of i've kind of let it sit for a while because the iphone has become my main phone and i transferred the uh, actually the number has been forwarded from my old number to the to the and that was, that was easy, it's right? so confused. Oh, that, was, that part was real easy. Yeah. <laughs> and all of our calls, so if you call our business phone, the 954-83-GEEKS, you will get anybody. Well, well, somebody will answer for sure on some phone. So that device. just all goes through go Google, Voice. Google Voice. So right. and there's the a new, lot. The and new Nexus phone, this is... The, the real number is the Google Voice number. So this is our business phone now. But we'll be talking about all of these things. And there's, there's And we so do expect to this to help us in Europe because T-Mobile actually includes Europe. And the Google phone is primarily Wi-Fi. So if we're on a Wi-Fi connection. So we are going to be in England for two weeks. And we are already planned for the two Sundays. So we will not do a show on Sunday but we are intending to do a show. Right. right now we have it tentatively planned for Wednesday, June 24, probably still two o'clock. So if you wanna pencil it into your calendars, Wednesday, June 24, two o'clock Eastern time, it'll be seven o'clock for us. Okay. We plan to do that and we'll just be talking about our experiences using smartphones in Europe. And if anybody is watching out there in the UK and wants to have us as 
to do a seminar over there. <laughs> I think that would be so much fun. I don't know. Phil and Tracy have us pretty busy. They do. That's true. <laughs> All right, so we think we have a great show for you this week, starting with a quick tip about how to use bubble level on an iPhone and making capital letters using the swipe application. Our beginner's lesson this week is on Google Photos. This is the new Google Photos that has just come out, and we're going to try and get you started with that. So what all the fuss is about and how to really get in there. And we have an app of the week. I'm using PixArt this week. This is a new editing program on mobile devices because on these mobile devices, you can't use Picasa. You have to use something else. And this one's a free one, and it's pretty cool. So we'll check that out. If you have any questions, put them down there in the comments, either here on the Google Plus event page, or if you're watching on YouTube, you can put the comments in there and we should be able to see them. And the show is recorded on YouTube, so you'll be able to see all of the reruns and all that stuff there. Okay. You ready for your quick tips? Sure. Okay. Let's get to it. And I'm going to do it just with the iPhone because the one thing works exactly the same and the second thing is iPhone only. So let me put that up there. Okay. So the first tip I want to show you, and I use my thumbprint to open it up, is using swipe and getting capital letters. <laughs> uh, first of all, your first tip, in case you didn't know, is that the swipe keyboard is available on the iPhone, not just Android, like it started off. And if you didn't know that, you might want to review episode 18, where we talked all about that. But my thing is I want to write capital letters. So I want to write a note about the show. What does this button do? You can take the W and swipe up above the keyboard before doing the H-A-T. Does this button do. I just think that is so cool. I had learned this. I've been, I love swipe. I've been using swipe ever since I've had a, an, a, a phone and I l overlooked you. <laughs> I said, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I did not know that you could make capital letters just by the way you uh, swipe on the screen. And that works exactly the same on the Android. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is an Apple only. On the iPhone, there is a built-in compass right. or a pre-installed compass app. Yep. And compass app is very nice, but there's another hidden app here that we as RVers like to use all the time. And that, so now it's decided it's time to calibrate. Yeah. So all you have to do, do you know how to calibrate it? Tilt the screen. Oh, well, it just it went ahead. Oh, okay. Because, <laughs> of, because it was on a flat surface, I yeah, expect. Yeah. But you just kind of tilt it around and you and you let that circle fill up. It's pretty cool. It's like a, a game. Watching it calibrate. <laughs> well, yeah. It's like rolling a marble around in one of those toys. Anyway. But if you hold your finger over at the right edge and swipe in, there's another app. And that is the Bubble Level app. And I love that graphic. Yeah, it'd be better if it had color. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> well, but better than other ones are, are just literal look like a real bubble level with a bubble going back and forth. I, I like this one. Boy, so we're not completely level here, are we? Oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> Either that or it's not calibrated, right? Okay, so those are your two just quick tips um, on, on iPhone and next then we want to first we want to just talk about google photos a little bit okay all right so first of all realize that this is the announcement that was only 2 weeks ago google photos is new from google it is the third reincarnation of what started out as picasso web albums then it was google plus photos now it's google photos and it was just announced two weeks ago, and yet I have become obsessed. Yeah. 
I love Google Fo I, It's so much fun to play with, but I am a photo geek. You know, I have been the keeper of all of our photos for the 11 years that we've been RVing and taking so many pictures and even before that. But what made me realize that, yep, this is really fun is when I saw Jim start to use it. Oh, yeah. So it, first of all, it was, it's easy enough and understandable enough. The first thing it does is take all the pictures. How many pictures did you have on your phone? Close to 25. Thousand? No. No, 2,000. Tw uh, 2,400. That's what it was. <laughs> 2,400. And the first thing that Google Photos does, it can take all the photos from your devices and your computer, but primarily your devices, and upload them to your Google account. But then what happens? Well, then Google does something special with, with what they call the assistant, and it is making their own organization behind the scenes and it takes similar photos and it'll put together collages it'll put together movies or stories and it'll do all of this behind the scenes and it is just so cool because you'll get a notification that this has happened and you can go in and check it out it's pretty cool each time you open google photos it's like waking up to presents under the christmas tree you say, oh, what does it have for me today? <laughs> because there's new things. And that is what is brand new. So the, the logo looks exactly like the old Google Plus photos. So it is confusing. All right, there it is. But it is new. It is not Google Plus. And you do not need to be on, you do not need to be a member of Google Plus in order to use it. All you need is a Google account. Number two, it has unlimited free storage for high resolution photos. Yeah, that's something that's new. Yeah, it's still not full size. If you want your full size photos uploaded, then you're going to have to pay for storage. It's very cheap, but. That will count against your Google storage allotment. Yeah, your 15 gigabytes. But the high resolution is twice as high as it used to be at 16 megapixels. Uh, you can get to it on the web by photos.google.com or on an Android or iPhone, you download the app. So this, you know, we could talk on for hours and hours. In fact, oh, oh. I do want to show you. <laughs> we could, couldn't I, we? I do want to show you. I am, I think this is so cool that I'm starting a whole new category of tutorial videos on our website. And I do just want to show you that very, very briefly. So where is website? Here we go. And oh, it's over here. It's over here. Sorry. <laughs> we have so many screens in front of us here. <laughs> OK, so here is our geeksontour.com website. And here is tutorial videos. We have all sorts of tutorial videos. And Picasso has been one of our specialty for 10 years now. But now there's Google Photos. I made a category just called Photos. And Picasa is underneath that. And then so is Google Photos. So if you are a member of Geeks on Tour, please check this out. This is where we have our static videos. They're two to five minutes each on specific topics. And so here's what I've done with Google Photos so far. How to set up the auto backup and an introduction, kind of what I'm going to show you live today. These are the prepared videos. OK. So back to this. So I'm going to start with the Android this time. And first of all, if you want to get Google Photos, how do you get it? Well, you need to go to your Play Store. Play Store, and just search for photos. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Search for photos. 
And as I say, you'll notice that the icon looks just like the old Google Plus photos did. In fact, if you had Google Plus photos, I think it upgraded to, to this one. Okay. It is by Google. A lot of people have kind of knock off and try to imitate the logo, but so make sure that you look for the Google Inc. Mine is already installed, so I don't have to do that. And there it is right there. So there's my photos. The first thing you'll need to do is turn on the auto back. I mean, if you really want to use it, you want to turn on the auto backup. And that is in settings. Your menu is those three bars up there. What do they call that? Uh, some people call it the hamburger. That's the two, the hamburger between the buns. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The three bars is sometimes called the hamburger menu. So you tap the three bars and then settings. In settings, backup and sync. And you want to turn that on. Now, if, if like us, when you travel, you don't always have good internet connection and you don't you might want to turn that off sometimes. So oh, yeah, because if you're using your cellular data for your internet connection, this thing is going to use a, a lot. lot of data because it's going to upload these pictures at a very high resolution and it's going to, going to eat up your data. So if you have a limited data plan, you want to be careful. And it's important to also know that if you're using a, a local Wi-Fi hotspot, connected to your data, then you're going to, still going to be using that cellular data. But if you have a public Wi-Fi hotspot, then you're fine. Or if you're at a, at a home with a cable or DSL or Yeah, we actually are in, fiber. A, in a townhouse in Fort Lauderdale now. And one of the reasons we're here is we just got fiber internet here yes, day before yesterday. Day before yesterday. So we're styling. We have really high speed. and. We hope that it's going to really improve the show, so at least while we're here in town. Yes. So when you're connected to that, unlimited, no problem. If not, you might want to turn it off. There is a setting, and I'll show you that. But So if I say, OK, got it. So now it's off. So if you now come in and turn it on, then there's a couple of settings. First, make sure, and, back, and one of the main things, it always goes back to original size, oh, and that is that bad, one. bad, bad. I've, I've actually put in this as a request, say that is just not good. I do not want to upload my full size. That is not free. I want to upload the high quality. That's plenty big enough, but every time I turn it off and turn it back on, it reverts back to original size. Yeah, so that's really a good thing to check because hopefully when you turn it on, you're going to be in a place where you have unlimited data. So you can put that all up there and then it's going to only get your changes after that big first upload. But high quality is, is the way to go. Right. Next thing, make sure that the Google account is the correct account. Oh my God, is your Google account critical? If you have multiple Google accounts and you get messed up, it, there is no easy way to fix that. So make sure you know what your Google account is and you're using one Google account for all your photo needs. Yeah, it's time to... <laughs> yeah. downsize and make sure you have everything under the same account. Okay, now there's two more settings, backup photos over Wi-Fi or mobile network. So the default here is good. The default is over Wi-Fi only. And that's good. So it will not be using your Verizon data unless your Wi-Fi is provided by a jetpack. You know, then it doesn't matter. You'd have to turn it off. But over Wi-Fi only is fine unless, like us, you have unlimited data. With this this particular phone on Verizon is an unlimited data account, so I let it do it over Wi-Fi or mobile network. You can also make that setting for for your videos. I'm going to keep videos on Wi-Fi only. And then on the Android, there is an extra feature that you can specify which folders. Every photo app on your phone creates a separate set of photos and Google Photos can back them all up or not. So for example, I said 
nah, I don't want my screenshots in my photo, Google Photos. Okay, so you have that backed up, and that means as soon as you turn that on, every photo on your phone is going to start uploading to your Google account. There, and after that, it will be seen from any device. From any device that either has, well, it has to be a connected device. Yeah, right. So these photos that I'm looking at here are both online and on the phone. That's what the photos does. If you swipe over to the left, okay, and you have to swipe from the middle of the screen. Swiping from the left brings that menu back up, but you can swipe this way and get to the assistant. The assistant is pretty cool. That's where these presents are, are wrapped <laughs> and you can decide whether or not you want to keep them. And then to the last one is collections. Collections is where your albums are or your movies or your stories. So realize that when you're on collections, there's a drop down arrow. It's not just, so albums, these are the albums I've been keeping for years. So it goes all the way back to 2003, I believe. And notice this scroll bar at the left. Can you That's see? nice. Yeah. yeah. So it's now, and now you're seeing the date as I scroll down. So if I'm looking for something in 2005, I can just keep scrolling down until oh, too far. I get to. Oh, I don't have much in 2005 there. So in 2000, in November 2005, we were in San Antonio. Oh, that's the river walk in the Alamo. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. But is that cool or what? How instantly um, you can see your stuff. I think of so many people that have told me, oh, I took this great trip to wherever. <laughs> <laughs> France. <laughs> to France in uh, 2005. I said, really, I want to see pictures. Show me pictures, they say. I have no idea where those pictures are. I don't know which computer they're on or what backup disk they're on. Well, if you follow this practice and use Google Photos to upload your pictures from all your computers, all your phones, it's like having a giant warehouse. Oh, I like that. It's like having just a giant warehouse for all your photos and you don't have to decide what boxes they go in. You just dump them all into this warehouse and Google has their minions. <laughs> all you have to do is ask and that's come, that's the search part. So these are my folders where I decided years ago, these are the albums that I created using Picasa and Picasa web albums for the last 10, 13 years. But I also with Google photos now, have the ability, I want to get back to photos. That was the middle screen. The right screen is albums and other collections. The middle screen is photos. The left screen is assistant. Okay, the middle screen. You can also get there by the menu though. So if <laughs> I can go to assistant, menu, photos, menu, collections. All right, back to photos. If I say, so, and I am now looking at just my warehouse and there's that same little scroll bar that I can go and find a date or I can search. I can search for, let's say, and I just, I tested this out. So I'm just going to tap on it. Mount Rushmore. Boom. We were at Mount Rushmore in 2013. We were also in Mount Rushmore in 2011, and there we are in 2004. All of our pictures of Mount Rushmore are available to me just by shouting into my warehouse. Hey, give me Mount Rushmore. Give me Mount Rushmore. That's great. Okay. That's, that's one of the things that really just jazz, got me jazzed about. That Google is what photos. is so fun. Because that you just find things that you forgot you had and you didn't, you know, you couldn't figure out where they were. And it was just so, so cool. 
So what do you got here? Okay, now I'm going to go to the iPad. Okay. Yeah, and we don't, you know, I will be having lots and lots of videos for members on geeksontour.com. You know, we only have a few minutes here to show you just the getting started. So here I am on an iPad, and you need to get the app. And how do you get an app on an iPad? You go to the app store. Upper right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and same thing, you're just going to search for photos. Search in the upper right hand corner. Type photos. And there is the Google Photos app by Google Inc. And I do already have it, so I don't have to install it. And you can open it right from there if you want. Yeah, but I'm going to show it on my home screen. That's just <laughs> my method. Okay, so this is Photos on the iPad. And same thing, you can swipe, swipe that way. Oh, you're selecting. Okay, I selected. I didn't mean to select. That's another cool thing. So I'm just going to tap that X at the top to say, never mind. I didn't mean to select. You can swipe to the, that way and get your assistant. You can swipe the other way and get to your collections, which there's a drop down arrow and your collections are albums, movies, and stories. How do we turn on auto backup? Same thing. The menu in the upper left and settings and backup and sync and it is currently on let me show you if anything happens when i turn it off i turn it back on you know piece of cake on the ipad the upload size stays at high quality that's as it should be <laughs> if i set it to high quality i want it to stay at high quality i do not want original because that's going to use up my space allotment in my Google warehouse. And you still have the options to say, yes, I want the, to use cellular data to back up. No, on this device, this is an AT&T and it is not unlimited. We're paying for every gigabyte. So I do not want it to use cellular data. And those are the settings. All right. Then you the search and help, make sure to notice help. If you install this, spend some time, spend some time in help. You it can, really is helpful. Yeah, you can either ask a question or you can just read through the manual, if you will, of the help. And if you're having a, an issue, you can send feedback. Now that does go to Apple. Whether or not you get a response might be another story, but you we can, have not tried that. You can use that send feedback. All right. Now, where are these photos? These photos are online, and some of them might be on the device, but they are online. So I'm looking at the exact same photos here as I am on my Android, as long as it's using the same account. So I can tap search, and as soon as I tap search, it categorizes all the pictures into people, places, things, and types. But I also have the search up here, so I can type Mount Rushmore. And search. And it auto-corrects it to my Rushmore. So <laughs> I have to fix that. And that is easier said than done. Come on, there. Mount Rushmore. And there are all the same pictures, some from 2013, some from 2011, and one from 2004. So whatever device you have in your hands, you have all of your photos available to you in a good way, right. in a way that you can actually get to. Now, it's not perfect with oh. getting all of the pictures <laughs> in there. And, well, nothing is perfect. No, this is not. And this does not replace Picasso. There's a lot 
that Google Photos does not do. It is not a good photo editor. It is not a good tool for you to organize your photos. Right. So if you're used to doing your own organization and you have a, a process and you don't want to give that up because you're used to it, you know where things are, then this you is stay not with it. Yeah. This is in addition to that though. Yeah. And I think the, the main people that Google Photos is for is those majority of us who keep taking more and more and more pictures. It's gotten totally out of control. You don't know where they are. It's, you are overwhelmed by the amount of work it would be to organize them yourself. You don't just say, take them, Google. <laughs> and it isn't a private. They're all private. You can share them, that's a whole other thing, but it is private. The auto upload is totally private just to you logged into your account. And then you don't have to organize it. Right. I mean, people say this is a great organizing tool. No, I don't think it's an organizing tool at all. It's a way to see your photos without them being organized. Yeah. I okay. agree. Well, Real quick here, I see some questions coming in, so I figure we okay. should, should hit those real quick. Bob says, my Android says that my photos have stopped, so the app has stopped on his device. And yeah, that'll happen occasionally, not just with photos, but almost any, any app that'll happen with. And basically what you really want to do there is just restart your device. Reboot and, usually fixes that. And if that doesn't work, then uninstall and reinstall the app. It really isn't that big. It doesn't take that long. Ron says he has all his pictures on Flickr. Can these be imported to Google Photos? Only, and Flickr is great, and it gives you, what, a terabyte of space? So. That is a main competitor to this, but these particular tools Flickr doesn't have. You would need to download to your computer and re-upload to Picasa. Okay. And then, okay, Bob, Bill wants to know the same <laughs> thing. Easy way to get my Flickr photos to Google Photos. And actually, that's not a bad idea because then you have a backup. Now you have all, a backup, right? yeah. And then Jeff says, oh, happy birthday, Jeff. Happy birthday, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's good to see you. But yeah, I have Apple Photos. Which, which pictures is Google? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a big deal. If you have an Apple device and you're using the i the new iCloud Photos, it you and you turn on Google Photos, you're now uploading twice. Although I think that's a better way to go. If you want to delete them from your device, go ahead, upload to Apple device, iCloud and to Google Photos. Can they work together? No, they are, they are two competitors for the same thing. And when the iPhotos, no, not iPhotos, iCloud photo library, iPhotos is gone. iPhotos is old. iCloud photo library. When I read up on that and started using it and said, ooh, I like the way this works. But it's not free. And it does not have this fun, fun, cool stuff that Google Photos has. So Google Photos is now on their third iteration of trying to get this right. Third time's a charm. That's right. I, I really think they do. So the iCloud is taking the photos from your device and Google Photos is taking the photos from your device. They don't go the other way. They only go from device up. Okay. And that's important to know. Synchronizing does delete, but but storage does not. Yeah. Storage only goes one way. Yeah, and that, that gets to be a little dicey there because I wanted to get rid of the pictures that were on this phone, which had my largest group of pictures. This is the Samsung. And but I was real nervous when I I did the sync and I made sure that I had a good 
data plan and everything was working good and it uploaded them all. It took a while because there were, you know, there are a lot of pictures. And then I, I just spot checked. I just made sure that the pictures that were still here were in the cloud. And then I felt okay with deleting them. I did it in small steps, but I felt okay. And it, and it is fine because now I can see all of my photos, all of my pictures and my videos all either on my phone, that phone, this phone, or the computer, or the computer. And, it, and it's all the same. I like looking at them on the computer because it's a big screen, but, but to sh you always have your phone with you, right? But deleting is, you know, I, I already have one video on our, on our website for deleting and I'm going to make several more because yeah, I do not want people to delete their photos real not knowing what they're deleting. Right. So for example, go back to the mm -hmm. iPad. On the iPad, if I bring up a photo and I tap the trash can, it says items moved to trash from your photos library also get removed from all your sync devices and contact census albums. So this deletes from your Google account. This picture is gone. Now it's not gone, it's moved to trash, Right. where you can get it back from trash but after 60 days, it will be automatically gone from so trash. So be careful with that. But if you use the Apple Photos app <laughs> and delete a photo, you're only deleting it from the device. Right. So that's now on the Android. And I, I like the way this works better on the Android. If you tap on your menu, notice you have an option called device folders. So if I choose that, I am now only looking at photos that live on this device. So if I delete a photo from here, that one looks like garbage. And where's delete? Must be under the menu. Delete device copy. So that will delete from the phone, but it'll still be in the cloud. So we that, that you got you got to work on this and but we will have videos. We will have lots of videos uh, for for members at geeksontour.com. Very good. Okay, I think that was it. You have a an app of the week. Well, are there more questions? Yeah, just uh, do you have to take the photos from a device, phone or iPad for them to show where they were taken? Ah, well, I think you're talking, if you take a photo with the device and you have the geotagging setting turned on, then that photo has the latitude and longitude right in it. But if what you're asking, and, and, and a camera does not, but if what you're asking is how does Google know what things were taken at Mount Rushmore, for example, they do that with all sorts of data. They, it does not depend on the geotagging. Right. It depends on the name of the file, the name of the album that you maybe put it in. It depends on, it knows what a picture is. It, it knows the picture of Mount Rushmore and it can recognize that. It's artificial intelligence. And it is getting better and better. I can ask for pictures of trains and it knows what a train is. No matter, it doesn't matter that it, train was in the file name or in any part of it, a tag or a caption, it knew where the trains were. Now, so. now some of the results are kind of funny. Oh yeah. I can, I can search for beaches and I get quartzite, Arizona. That's a desert. That's about as far from a beach, <laughs> but we are members of the yacht club there though. <laughs> But uh, Google sees sand and it thinks that that must be a beach. Now, I know some of you are thinking, oh, this is getting creepy. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is absolutely a creepiness factor to it. But if you like your pictures and you want to be able to view them all, this is a cool way to go. Bill says he has 40,000 plus photos on a couple of portable hard drives. And all those photos are also on Flickr. Flickr has been my alternate backup location, which is really good. If I ever lost my hard drives or they got corrupt, at least they're on Flickr. Should I even put them even on? Even bother doing this? Mm, good um, question. 
Yeah, well, if if you like what you've seen here, yeah. you know, I say yes. And all, all you have to do, there's a auto backup app on your computer too. And there's a setting there that says, take photos from any device I plug into it. So all you would have to do is plug in that hard drive, turn it on, and it would start uploading all of those to Google Photos. Whether or not you want to, that's up to you. Uh, yeah, now that you have. You, you can be selective with that too. You don't have to. Right, you can say what certain what folders, folders if you that want. Kind of stuff. It doesn't have to take everything, but it can. All right. Is that it? There's Rosemary. What's that? Yep, we got oh, that. Oh, we got that. Okay. All right. The app of the week. The app of the week this week. Where my. Uh, let's get this going here. Well, let's. Yeah, get it ready. Which which device are oh, we using? <laughs> what do you got there? <laughs> this is your Samsung. Okay, my Samsung doesn't have that on there. I okay, think. so use the Nexus here. I think you're going to have to do that because I've I've never even seen this app. The okay. reason that he's showing this app though is that the new Google Photos does not have very good editing. Google likes to put stuff out before they are completely ready. I mean, they have this cool search stuff, so they wanted everybody to have that. There is not good editing on it. And one of the number one things that we are used to with Picasa that you cannot do on Google Photos is text. Right. And this is something that you can do text with. And this is one of the first ones. Now, it, it, you get it from the App Store. It's called PixArt. And there it is. And you can notice there you have effects, collage, draw, edit. You can take pictures. And of course, you can shop. That's how they make their money. But if you just go to edit, now you have some choices. And you can get these pictures from your gallery, or you can capture new pictures, or if you have them on any of these social networking look at all the places where you can get them from yeah, your facebook you or your get dropbox them, get them from google <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's that's from all pictures on the internet yeah from google okay and they all even right. have go to your this there's a lot to this but we would just want to quickly show you that you can put text on there okay Oh, there's one I made at the very top. Did you see that? <laughs> Maybe not. There it is. Aww. <laughs> so you created that whole thing. So this little clip art guy is in yeah, there too. Yeah, you get clip art. You can put text in there. Now, if you want to just so just hit on text. Well, just keep that one on there. That's fine. All right. Or pick another one. I can has hamburger, cheeseburger. Okay. What? I don't know. What'd you do? I well, I have the kitten up. Okay. Can you edit that, or can you add something to it? Oh, oh, oh! I see what it? you mean. No, I guess not. So I have I tap on edit first, and then go to gallery, right? And then go to photos. All right, and. It seems like you want a photo, don't you? Yeah, well, up at the top there, photos. There you go. Just grab a picture. There we go. All right. You get some sizes. And this was in Orlando. So just write text on there. Ava and Chris in Orlando. <laughs> Close. Okay. And then plus? Yep. Oh, you can save frequently used location based date and time. So, no, just the checkbox at the top. I'm sorry. Oh, that was to add something else to it. Right. So now you have some tools. You have your handles. You can size it. You can change it. And you have a bunch of different 
tools down at the bottom. So that's putting text on a picture. When you're ready with that, you just check it again. Some of the cool things you can do with this, you can curve it, you can make it, you know, fancy. You can really get fancy with this. You can do colors. You can use it to put watermarks on there because you have a, a slider there that will give you some transparency. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with this app and it works on the Android and it works on the Apple iDevices and it even works on the on the Windows phone, right? Yeah, this is the first app I've seen in a while that works on Windows phones. So that's that's cool to see. Yeah. So it looks quite cool. And it's just not the only one. There's lots of photo editing apps out there. And, uh, you know, the Google will, will get it. But meanwhile, this where there's was a just, will, there's a way. Yeah, I was looking for something that would put text on the picture because that's something that Picasa has been the only one that you could do that with with a free program. And I saw this thing and I went, wow, look at all the stuff it can do. And I haven't even scratched the surface of, of the stuff that it could do. So give it a shot. PixArt, that's our app of the week. And you realize the difference with Picasa, right? Picasa is computer software. It's not web software or mobile device software. So that's why we say we're used to doing this on Picasa. We can't do it now. We can still do it on Picasa, but that's on the computer, right? not on the mobile device or the web. And JoLynn says that she sees a possible way to transfer directly from Flickr to Google. There's a Flickr to plus.com migration tool for Flickr to Google Plus. Okay, but Google Plus has been separated from Google Photos now, so that's... Right, but if it transfers the photos, they're all going into that same warehouse. Right. You just have to make sure that they're going in at a size that works for you. Yeah. Does that make sense? I think it does. Okay. Hmm. Good question, Bill. <laughs> Bill, you always <laughs> ask us to join but never mention a price. How much is membership? All right. Well, that's a great question. If you go to our website and click on the Become a Member, you'll get that information there. So... Chris is going there right now. So here's our website, geeksontour.com. You just click on become a member. And uh, you, there's two choices. We, only, we just have a one, we have annual memberships. And you can either, if you're like me and you don't like to sign up for anything that continues, you can just pay $68, that gives you one year, and at the end of that year, you're done, or you get an option to renew. If you choose, which we like, to automatically renew on an annual basis, then we give you 10 bucks off. That's $58 on an annual recurring basis. Now, you do need a PayPal account for the annual recurring for the one year, and we're going to try and work out something with somebody else, but... Anyway, for the annual recurring, it still has to go through PayPal. PayPal is our payment processor, but you can use a regular credit card or an e-check, or if worst case, you can send us a check in the mail. That just takes a lot longer. Okay? Yep. We're running over a little bit this time. Yeah, well, I had we a had feeling a lot to talk. we might. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you learn something? So here's our review questions. Google Photos link will make stories, animations, and more fun creations for your photos. We, and we didn't spend much time on that, but it's the assistant. Yes. That, that screen at the left, the assistant, is where you will see the, the presence that comes All the, the really tree. fun, cool stuff is under the assistant. I think that was mine. Okay. So when you turn on the auto backup feature to upload all your photos, there are two settings to change. What are they? Uh, one is the file size. I highly recommend using the high resolution and not the original. Number two is whether or not to use the, your cellular data or Wi-Fi only. So those are questions that you have to kind of determine on your own. 
depending on how you're connecting to the internet and how much space. Some people have a lot of room on Google and they want to upload their full size. Full size right, right. Pictures. If you want to upload full size, fine. I don't. Right. True or false, if you have multiple Google accounts, it won't matter where you upload the pictures. You can see them all together. False, 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 false. <laughs> no, <laughs> pay strict attention to your Google account. That's the key to all of the services on Google is your account. Okay. Stick with one. Please. True or false, if you previously uploaded pictures to Google or Picasso web albums, or Google Plus Photos, you will see those using Google Photos. Yep. It's all the same warehouse of photos in your Google account. And it's just over time that they've been being put into these different places, but they're all accessible because it is under your Google account, right? Well, it's not different places. It's just different interfaces okay, right. At for different the same times place. Yeah. Over, over time. <laughs> okay, cool. And does anyone use the audio notes that so many cameras allow so where you can actually put annotations to your right. pictures? I don't, but you did that once. I have yeah. done that a little bit, but but not. It just seemed kind of silly. If I want sound, I'll use a video. Yeah. I'll take okay. a video. But it might be useful in some, some instances. All right. So where are we here? I think we're done. <laughs> We better be. So we're, on, we're coming up on an hour now. Okay. It's supposed to be more like 40 minutes. Okay. Well, like us on Facebook at our Facebook page, facebook.com, Geeks on Tour. And the web page, we went through that. All our weekly shows are there on our, on our website. And the web page with all of our recent newsletters are there too. Just blogs and articles, newsletters. Benefits, well, you get all kinds of benefits. All the tutorial videos, and now Chris has just created, what, five or six? Five on Google Photos, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> oh, yeah. So tutorial videos, you get all of those. You can ask questions on our members' Q&A forum. Anybody can look at the forum, but if you want to ask questions on the forum and get answers from us, then you need to be a member and the show notes they're getting really good too and we'll have links and things in there yeah our show notes are for members only it includes all the links that we refer to okay become a member next time we'll see you from england we're tentatively scheduled for wednesday june 24th we'll have a bunch of tips we'll have a bunch of pictures for you too <laughs> and we'll take your questions so put them in the comments watch for the notification uh leave your questions in the comments click let us know that you're coming. Geeks on Tour technology. What does this button do? What does this button do? Just <laughs> keep pushing buttons and see what happens. Don't touch that button, <laughs> but we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.